Let's turn now to a man who knows Oscar Pistorius very well. Blake Leeper is a US Paralympian who competed against Pistorius in five races in London this past summer in the 400 meter individual. Pistorius took the gold and Leeper was right behind him with silver and Blake Leeper joins me now. Blake, thank you so much for joining me. I, I would imagine everyone in the world of Paralympics and indeed Olympians all over the world are all in a sense of complete and utter shock. What is your reaction to what's happened? Yes, thanks for having me. Um, like you said, complete shock. Um, knowing Oscar and competing with him for the past couple, three years. Um, this is something that I wouldn't relay him to. Um, so when I heard the allegations and I heard him in the situation, I was in complete shock. I, I truly was. You've described Oscar as a role model, a mentor, an inspiration and a brother. Uh, do you still feel the same way, given everything we now know? Yes, because um, I can only relate to the, the times I spent with him. And um, the times I spent with him, he went on his way to help me out. And um, even though we was competitors, uh, he understood what the biggest mission was. And that was bringing awareness for disability of people around the world. And he helped me out. And he's the reason why I'm here today. He's the reason why he inspired me to want to compete and to compete on a high level to get to the Paralympic Games. I interviewed Oscar about three months ago. Um, it was, I think, the last interview he did really for any uh, television of any sub substance. Uh, he was very charming. He was very softly spoken, very polite. But I did remind him at one stage about the blow up uh, at the London Paralympics when he lost to a runner who had the longer blades. And his behavior, frankly, trackside was explosive and pretty unpleasant. And this is what he said by way of response. Now, here's what's interesting about you, because you seem such a lovely guy. You're polite, you're charming, you're the poster boy now for running around the world. And yet there was a little moment, a little flash, Oscar, in the Paralympics when you lost in the 400, I think it was, to this Brazilian yeah, wonder guy. And he had, yeah. yeah, 200, was it? And he had longer blades than you. And afterwards, in the trackside interview, you went absolutely tonto. <laughs> basically saying the same stuff about him that Michael Johnson says about no, you. No, it's very different. I mean, um, <laughs> I, I agree, you know, I did, it wasn't maybe the right time. I think, um, I think I'm think i still learning and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more lessons throughout my life. Um, I had to give you a bit of stick on Twitter for that outburst. <laughs> I saw that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We all make mistakes. I mean, it was a, an extraordinarily different Oscar Pistorius that I interviewed to the one that we saw blow up trackside. What it told me was he was a ferocious competitor, but that also he had a temper. Were you aware of that side of him? Or were you surprised when you saw um, that, that trackside interview? To be honest, I was surprised. Um, but you got to understand that it was high emotions, you know, on a competitive nature. And he's a really competitive person. I mean, this shows that regardless if it was the Olympics or the Paralympics, that he really still wanted to win. So that just shows that he was a very, very extremely competitive person. And uh, emotions was running high, you know what I'm saying? Running 200 meters and then giving it all you got, you may, oxygen level doesn't get to your brain as quick as possible. So, I mean, I, I kind of understand where he was coming from, being upset. And just people got to realize that he just loves to win, he loves to compete. And the fact that he showed emotion means how bad he really loved to compete, even at the Paralympic Games. I mean, it also showed a, a volatility, though, that many wouldn't assume existed if you just interviewed Oscar, as I did. He seemed so mild, uh, mild-mannered in, in every way. But it showed me that he did have a temper to him, and there may be another side to him. We now know a lot about his kind of adrenaline kicks, whether it was driving cars at high speed or owning guns at home and so on. I mean, did you feel you knew the real Oscar, or did he keep himself pretty close? Um, he, for, for me, um, I just know him on a competitive nature, and uh, that was on the track. And I, when I see him on the track, I never associate him as him having a bad temper or on, the, on that type of nature, to be honest with you. So when I did see that, yeah, I was shocked. But uh, just being briefly with him, uh, I never seen him on that type of capacity. There are allegations that they found steroids at his house, um, which, again, none of this has been confirmed yet publicly, but the suggestion being that he said he was keeping them for friends. We don't know if that's true or not, but would you be very shocked if it turned out that Oscar himself had been abusing steroids? Yes, I would. Um, I, like you said, they're allegations, so we don't know, and I don't know myself, but um, I know he, he works hard, and um, I know he's progressed over the years. And I know um, that he's a hard worker. And uh, well, like I said, only time could tell uh, what, what truly is the true st story of it. I talked to him briefly in my interview about uh, female admirers. Just watch a clip of what he said back to me. 
And how are you uh, dealing with the millions of women that have been attracted to you <laughs> since your Olympic appearances? I haven't had much time to think about that. I've got a, I'm seeing somebody in South Africa. She's a, she's a great girl, and just, uh, yeah, just taking life as it comes. You know, I start training in two and a half weeks, so uh, my mind's in the right place still. I'm going to clip there. It just reminds everyone again what an appalling tragedy it is. Uh, most of all, obviously, for, for his girlfriend who was killed. It wasn't the girl that he was talking about in that interview. We think he met Reva about three weeks later. Uh, but clearly he was popular with women, and there doesn't seem to have been much suggestion of any big problem with relationships. Did he ever share anything with you? Um, never. He never went into detail about, to me, with me about the situation. Um, most of our conversations that we did had was about track life and uh, how do we could better ourselves on, on the track and, you know, better ourselves as humans off the track. So when it comes to relationships, we never did we ever go into much details about that situation. And Blake, finally, I mean, do you think that you'll ever see Oscar run again? Um, personally, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. And I don't know what the future beholds. Um, only thing I can do is just pray for Oscar and pray for the victim and the victim's family. And uh, only time can tell what will happen to the future. Do you believe him? To be honest with you, that's not up to me. Um, I, I wasn't there, and um, I don't know the situation. I just know but personally that he was a, a very good person to me, and he went on his way to help me out as a mentor, and that I could tell that when he was associated to me, that his heart was in the right place. Blake Leeper, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you so much.